Hi, I am Lanre Ajayi, with you now on channel 1973.1 DT on people, places, and events. This is My City Speaks to Me, the Calgary edition. From here at Latin Art Center near Melville in Alberta Municipal District of Fort Hills, Canada. Amazing view. Welcome to Latin Art Center where the mission is to grow artists. Latin Art Center is a place that connects you to art, history, landscape, and a legacy of our border art pioneers, Alfred Coker and Barbara Letton. The Latin Art Center was founded by Barbara Letton in 1974. The Latin Art Center is situated in A.C. Letton and Barbara Letton's original home. It's an art gallery, museum, and art education center located on 80 acres of land just outside of Calgary, near Millerville in Alberta, in the Swedish street of Fort Hills. Now a provincially designated historic resource, this unique arts and craft inspired home was designed by A.C. Letton in the 1950s and boasts some of the most breathtaking mountain views in southern Alberta. In keeping up and respecting AC and Barbara Letton's legacy with value for creativity, relationships, learning, and the aesthetic experience, Letton Art Center offers unique and wide variety of activities, such as workshops and talks and informational sessions throughout the year. In his own words, and I quote, I paint because I must. I paint from 12 to 4 hours daily. Wherever I go, I see something to paint. As you can see beside me in this glass enclosure, the original leather jacket wore by A.C. Letton in 1956 while I was painting the Abada Mountains. You can see the original hat, the leather stool, and the box. You know, I use that as well as an artist. The box with the original paint brushes, the paint tubes, and the topping time or the cleaning agent to melt, to mix the paint and the pieces of clothing that he used while he was cleaning his brushes. Now, this is a piece of history here we're seeing and uh, it's been amazingly preserved, you know, for you to see and to learn a bit of history here at the Latin Art Center. Barbara Latin was born in Plymouth, England in 1909 and moved to Alberta with her family. She enrolled in Alberta's Provincial Institute of Technology and Art, now Alberta College of Art and Design and left school and married A.C. Letton in 1931. She became elected member of the Canadian Society of Painters, Etchers and Engravers. In 1965, she returned to the Alberta College of Arts and graduated with a diploma in fine arts in 1970. Between 1970 and 1971, both her and her husband purchased the Bali Hermit Schoolhouse and in 1971 officially opened the Latin Center for Art and Craft, now the Latin Art Center. In 1972, she visited Kahatok, formerly Old Man, to share her printmaking skills with its First Nations community. The Latin Foundation was officially incorporated in 1974. In 1984, she was awarded the Alberta Achievement Award for contribution to Alberta arts and passed away, sadly, in Millerville on April 18 at the age of 77. A.C. Leighton played a significant role in developing art and culture in Alberta throughout the 20th century. Born in Aston's East Sussex, England in 1901, he joined the British Royal Flying Corps and left because of an injury in 1918. His illustrative works of the Canadian Pacific Railway are still fashionable and appreciated almost a century after their creation and the arts communities that he played a critical role in founding, such as the Alberta Society of Artists and BAM School of Fine Arts, continue to thrive till today. A.C. Letton moved to Calgary to take position of the art director at the Provincial Institute of Technology and Art and received full membership into the Royal British Academy. In 1921, he married Barbara Mary Irvy and co-founded the Alberta Society of Artists. As the second president of the Provincial School of Technology and Art, now called AU Art, AC brought the rigors of traditional art training to southern Alberta. It was an example to all Albertans that solitude is a companion to inspiration and artistic productivity. Living a diverse body of work 
which can be found in art collections and as architecture across Canada and England. Our brother had much to gain from this traditional English man. Here at Latin, nature is the inspiration, the classroom and the playground, art and nature program for school groups. This is a four-hour on-site school program, combining exploring art in the Legend Art Center's museum with hands-on art lessons in the historic art studios. The program includes a dedicated instructor for each studio, who in addition to your art lesson will promote visual literacy, thoughtful observation, critical thinking, and discuss how to gain inspiration from the landscape around us. With 80 acres of foothills landscape, Students will enjoy a nature walk while recording their thoughts and experiences in their own sketchbook. The mission is to inspire an appreciation of heart and nature and to discover the connection between them. If you are a lover of nature and like to work, you know, to get inspiration around you from the nature and from the beautiful mountain view, here at Latin Art Center, across this path, you can actually walk miles and miles all around this property just to soak in the beautiful and the breathtaking inspiration that this place has to offer. Still on Mercedes speaks to me, the Calgary edition. Still exploring this amazing space created by AC and Barbara Layton. And I have someone here that will be taking us on a tour of this place to give us a background information and you know more information about this amazing space. And it's no other person than the executive director of the Latin Art Center, Stephanie Doll. How are you, Stephanie? Good, thank you. How are you? So what brought you to the Latin Art Center? I, so I started here as a summer student back in 2012. And there's an amazing historical collection at the Latin Art Center. And I was just fresh out of university and I got to play with the collection. And I was a curator for, for seven years. So wow. Yeah, I, uh, I did that. And then the last two years, I've been the executive director. That is amazing. So nine years straight, you've been here. Yeah. <laughs> enjoying this space. Yeah, and it went by like this. So take us on a tour of this space. Yeah. So we're just outside. We're in the parking lot of the Leighton Center. We have the historical house, which is a museum and an art gallery. Uh, just right here, we have the office of the Leighton Center. So that's my office. We have a communications coordinator and our curator works in there. And then just down this beautiful path is uh, to the education program. So we can go for a walk later and take you down there. Okay. Um, but I'll take you into the house. Just before we actually go into the house, I think it's important to note the beautiful gardens and the grounds of the Leighton Center. All this isn't possible without our volunteers. Oh. So we have many volunteers who help uh, work on this garden throughout the summer. So we're really, really thankful. And they look so beautiful. Yeah, it is. And it's so beautiful throughout throughout the summer. So I, if you're even just coming out for the art or the view, you have beautiful gardens that you can enjoy as well. It's amazing. Yeah. So we're inside the original home of Alfred Coker and Barbara Layton, and then we're going to be exploring all the amazing things that this place has to offer. Over yeah. to you. So we'll just do a little walking tour of the house, but this is the front entrance. So if you're visiting the Layton Center, this is where you're going to first come in and meet everyone. Usually you'll be greeted by our wonderful staff. Uh, Allison, she's running a gift shop right now, and she always gives tours to people who walk through the house, and she makes sure everyone feels welcome and understands the history of the place. But I'm going to take you actually to the museum, and then we'll go through the gallery, and then you can check out the gift shop. Okay, we head up. let's go. We're at the museum. So tell us about this space. Yeah, so this is the biggest, most beautiful space in the house. It's called the Great Room and it's dedicated to AC Layton. So AC came from England to Canada in the early 1900s and he came with CP Rail and was doing posters for CP Rail. Uh, those posters are really popular right now and a lot of people would recognize those designs. Uh, he's really well known because he played a really important role in uh, Alberta arts history, yeah. basically. So a lot of Alberta's biggest artists were actually trained by A.C. Lee. That's uh, he was, Yeah, he was one of the first directors of, um, it was called The Tech at the time. It's now uh, the Alberta University, University. of the Arts. Yeah. Yes. So I can imagine, these are original wooden furniture. Yeah, so this room, we actually have a quite a large collection with A.C. Layton's work in it. Um, so all the paintings you see in this room are original works of art by A.C. Layton. The house itself was designed by A.C. Layton, so his first career before, well he was trained as an architect before he became a fine artist. Hmm. And so the whole house is basically an artwork of his. Wow, that's <laughs> and amazing. Then, and then the wood furniture that you see, that's his, his art as well. That's amazing. So we're actually walking we're standing in the midst of history. Yes, oh absolutely. So the house itself is basically a piece of artwork. 
Wow. And uh, AC Lake was really big into arts and crafts movement, so he was really about making beautiful things for beautiful spaces, and he was all about the hand of craftsmanship. AC was a plein air artist and a landscape artist, so he would paint outside most of the time. Most of his time was out in the mountains hiking and painting and drawing and sketching, and then he would go into his studio and complete the paintings. So he made a ton of work, and if, actually if you're looking at a lot of original fine art auctions, um, you would find AC Layton's work come up quite often. That is amazing. Yeah. So in terms of museum, it's broken into different level areas that tell you AC Layton's life. So this section gives you the full overview of who he is, where he came from. This little area is dedicated to the first you know, part of AC Layton's life. So he's from England, he was a toy designer and a model designer in his early career. And then over here, this just shows that he was scouted by CP Rail. Uh, where these posters were stored in London, a lot of them were lost during World War II, wow. during the Blitz. So there's only a few originals left. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then after AC Layton left CP Rail, he, uh, he was a teacher at uh, AU. And, uh, well, that's what it's called now. Yeah. Um, but that's what the rest of this area is dedicated to, was the art that he created in that time. So, like I said earlier, he was a plein air artist, so he spent most of his time painting outside. So that's why we've dedicated uh, this area to showing him out in the mountains and on trail rides. And a lot of some of Alberta's best artists in the mid-1900s were trained by A.C. Layton as plein air artists. That's amazing. You know, you, you can't, can you, you know, I can imagine back then living in this beautiful space and looking out the window yeah. to the spectacular mountain view of the Albanian Rockies. Yeah, and that's you know. actually why he bought the, or bought this property to build this house was uh, in the 1950s. AC was coming to the end of his life, and he was he wasn't very healthy at the end of his life, so he couldn't get out to the mountains to paint. Wow. So that's why they bought this this property was so that he could keep painting mountains even if he was unable to. You know, just waking up early in the morning and looking out the window, you can get the inspiration on what to do, what to paint for that day. Yeah. So amazing. Yeah. So Barbara always said it was hard to go anywhere with AC in this area because he, every time he was driving, he was always very distracted. Yeah. And by everything he saw, he'd always have to stop and, you know. Take a look and yeah. get some inspiration. And yeah, and make a plan to come back and do a painting. So when he came to Canada, like a lot of artists at that time, he really kind of embraced the Western culture and being in the West and painting outdoors. We, I love some photos here that we have of him um, playing with a lasso. And uh, he's really lucky because he met a student of his um, when he was teaching and uh, named Barbara Lee. Who so, became the wife? Who became his wife, yes. Mm -hmm. So she's quite younger than him, um, but she was in school. He was her teacher for, I think, about a year or two years. And then she, they decided to get married, and once they were married, she had to leave school. Mm. And so she focused on managing him and his career. Um, but we can talk more about her then. But you see in these photos, and this painting is a perfect example of uh, Barbara was really into adventuring with AC Layton. That's why they were such a great couple. Oh. Is she would always join him out in the mountains, and she wrote a lot of journals about their times out hiking and plein air painting. And so this was painted on their honeymoon. And wow. Yes, apparently it was a very, very rainy, rainy honeymoon and they got off of a long day of trail riding and uh, I think he just saw the perfect moment and asked her to hold still where he did a quick sketch of, of Barbara after a long trail ride. That is amazing. Yes. <laughs> so this little display here is about their honeymoon when they were out. The compass and, telescope. Yeah, and she, Barbara Layton, she uh, made sure she documented the entire event. So we're really lucky to have that record. Of, uh, Amazing together. original collections. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> okay, so this is the green room. So as the green room is dedicated to AC Layton, the green room is really ded to, dedicated to the life of Barbara Layton. Okay. And Barbara Layton was the founder of the Layton Center. So as I was telling you earlier, she was an art student of AC Layton's and she had to leave school once she got married. But when AC Layton passed away in 1965, she decided to, you know, instead of being out here all alone, that she was actually going to go back to art school. Okay. So in the 70s, she went back to art school. 
And uh, when she finished, she decided she would open her home up to be a place where she could actually teach art to the community. Hmm. And so we've been doing that ever since 1975. Oh, yes, you still meet a lot of people come through our doors and they'll remember Barbara Layton sitting right here wow. uh, doing craft and teaching craft. Or her home was also down at the schoolhouse. She would be in the studios teaching kids. Hmm. So, and at that time, she also thought it would be a really great idea because uh, she really understood the importance of her husband's work. She thought it would be a great idea to turn the house into a bit of a display for his artwork and then to open up the rest of the house to be an art gallery. That's amazing. To keep on the legacy yes. of what they started together. Yes. So we still have a lot of plein air artists who come out and they're really excited to show here because it's part of that continuous legacy. Now overlooking this green room is uh, uh, a natural display of plants. Yes. So when Barbara lived here, she built this green, or it's called the atrium. And the old timbers are actually from a mine in Drumheller. Wow. So those were brought here and uh, an artist friend of hers helped, and a neighbor helped them erect this atrium. And we have photos of this atrium from when Barbara was here and the tree was just this tiny little twig, this Texas oak here. Wow. And so it's taken a lot of, <laughs> a lot of years and mm. love and care. As you know, things don't grow very fast here, but we're really proud of this atrium that we've been able to get it to this point. And I think Barbara. this piece really speaks to the art and nature program for kids, yes. students. Yes, and you know, I was just talking to a, a visitor who was here the other day and we hear this a lot, people will say, I come, like if I'm not feeling well or if I'm having a hard time in my life or if I need a little space in the city, I come and I sit here mm. and, you know, just listen to the water and it's a nice relaxation. So soothing and so relaxing. Yeah, and we're really lucky that we get to be open to the public as much as we are. Um, so people can just come and enjoy this space. Mm. Yeah, anytime. So I guess that's the, the green room here. Uh, it's really important actually to talk about Barbara Layton as a printmaker. Okay. That's what she was most known for. She was most known as a printmaker and a textile artist. And uh, you can see on our walls here, a lot of these works that we show, you can actually find in auction in Calgary as well. Wow. Um, or in a lot of collections around Western Canada. So she was very well known for her prints. Um, her prints are titled Barley, so for okay. Barbara Layton. And the way she started printmaking was her and AC needed to create extra income. And so she would make block prints of his paintings so that she, they were able to make copies. So that's basically, the block printing is what she's most known for. That's um, amazing. And so as I was saying earlier that uh, she started, she opened her house up to be an art gallery. That's where we'll be taking next, is okay. to the main gallery. Yeah. Fair enough. Let's go check it out. Okay, so this is actually the original room of the Layton Center. So this is the, or the, the heritage home. Uh, AC and Barbara lived here for about a year before they built the rest of the house. Okay. Yeah, and then so after AC Layton passed, Barbara turned her home into a gallery and an art center. And uh, this is our main gallery. The gallery also extends through the hallways and up into the tower. Okay. Um, we have about eight to 12 exhibitions throughout the year. So this space changes every six weeks mm. and uh, it's, a, it's a large variety of work. So sometimes we have emerging artist shows all the way up to very established, well-known uh, artists as well as we do a lot of painting and sculpture shows as well as installations. So mm. it's never the same. That's amazing. You can see some porcelain work, yeah. some metal construction work, some prints, some watercolor, some <laughs> glass works and some beautiful, amazing landscape paintings. Yeah, so what you're seeing right now, it's set up like this basically due to COVID. Um, usually we do curated shows throughout the year, but okay. because of the pandemic that changed our schedule a bit for this year. So right now we're focusing on members' artwork. Okay. Usually the gift shop is where we focus most on members' artwork and then we have two main festivals throughout the year where we feature members' work. And then the rest of the year we take submissions from all types of people from all over the world. Usually, usually we don't just have paintings on the wall, usually it would be some sort of installation or curated show. But this is this is what we get now and it's absolutely beautiful because we're so lucky to have such wow. amazing members. Uh, talking in terms of the pandemic, how in what way has this pandemic you know affected operations? So uh, it, I mean it's been a lot as the same as a lot of other galleries, but a big part of our program is the children's center. Yeah. And um, like I said, a big part of our program is bringing in school groups 
every day of the week. So we see about 10,000 school kids a year. That is amazing yes. work, 10,000 kids. <laughs> yeah, they go through the education center a year. But in March when the pandemic hit, it was we were basically given a day's notice and all of a sudden all the programs were cancelled. Wow. So uh, obviously it was a big learning curve for us. We've adjusted quite well and we're really lucky to have the support of Calgary Arts Foundation to be able um, or Calgary Arts Development to be able to, you know, kind of cushion the adjust. effects. Yeah. Yeah. To adjust, we're we're putting more programs online, and then we're also right now working on developing a program for homeschool kids to come out. Yeah. As well as other like the Boys and Girls Club or Scouts to be able to come out during the week and on the weekends. This is our gift shop, and so if you're a member at the Leighton Art Center, we have over 300 members. Uh, you're welcome to have your art in this gift shop. And uh, right now, because of the pandemic, we've had the opportunity to actually create an online gallery. So a lot of this work is available on Shopify as well. Um, but if you look around, there's thousands, literally thousands works. of pieces of fine craft and fine art in this. Now, these works are for members of, of the, the centre. Yeah. yeah. Now, for the benefit of our viewers yeah. who want to become a member, yeah. probably an about artist or an artist from around Canada. Yeah. What is the process of becoming a member? So it's pretty easy. So it's fifty dollars to become a member here, and once you're a member, you're um, invited to show your work in the shop. And then we also have a big festival in the winter called the uh, Christmas in the Country that you're able to participate in or um, apply for. Okay. And then um, you also get a discount on our workshops, and you also get to participate in our Jury Member Show. That so is that's cool. our largest show of the year. And it happens during our biggest festival of the year, which brings out thousands of people in one weekend. So that is, that is really so wonderful. And so some of our members are emerging artists straight, you know, some of them are even in high school. And it's been really great to see people progress throughout the years. Mm. So they'll just be coming right out of school and then all of a sudden they'll be getting a solo show a few years later. Um, and they can make money, you know, from yeah. the proceeds. Yes. Yes. That is another way, you know, very interesting to empower artists, local artists. Yes, and so we're, we've been really thankful that during the shutdown that we've been able to still support artists that way with the online sales. We've actually been doing, um, selling a lot of artist members' work, so it's been, it's been really good for them and we're really thankful. That's cool. Yeah.